how does the Teshin schema theory explain subjective phenomenal experience about, about why we put so much emphasis on on quail, on felt experience? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that um, it's a theory for why you believe that you have qualia. It's not a theory for how you get qualia. Right. So let me explain. Uh, and this is an example that I that um, that I s sometimes use. Um, <laughs> so I, I had a friend. He was a um, uh, a psychiatrist, and he had a, a, a patient, and the and he told me about. It. And the patient uh, was delusional. He thought he had a squirrel in his head. And um, it's a weird delusion, but this happens. People have odd ideas, but he's very fixed on this idea that there's a squirrel in his head instead of a brain. Okay, and you try to talk to him, and you say, "Well, that doesn't sound too likely." And he says, "Well, sorry, it's true." And you say, "Well, that's not very rational or logical." And he says, "True, but not everything's rational and logical." And then you could say, "Well, yeah, but we looked in your head, and there's no squirrel in there." Yeah, well, it's invisible. It's like it's intangible, but it's there. And then uh, you can say, "Well, I think what's happening is your brain has constructed a self-model bundle of information." that describes that state and you are captive to that information because everything you think that's true about yourself derives from information in your head so you're you're captive to that and your brain has built this at this very fundamental automatic level this model of squirrel in your head and now your the rest of your brain your higher cognition and so on is uh, you, you captive to that information, and that's why you're absolutely sure that you have that squirrel. And the guy says, yeah, sure, yada, yada, information, blah, blah, blah. You still haven't explained how the squirrel got in my head, right? And you can go in loops and loops and loops and never solve anything because the guy cannot grasp this fundamental truth that everything he th thinks he knows derives from information in the brain, and the information in the brain is not necessarily accurate. And those are the crucial points. And so when you ask, when people ask, how do we get the feeling, the subjective feel, the qualia, uh, the answer that AST provides is you think you have a feeling, you think you have qualia for the same reason you think anything. It's because of information in your brain. And that information is not generally accurate. It's schematic. It's not accurate. Right, so it's explaining why you think you have magic in your head, but it's saying you don't. It's saying what you really have is this other thing, this much more mechanistic process. But in trying to keep track of that, the brain has built a schematic model of it, and the schematic model depicts something that's a bit magical, and then your higher cognition gets hold of that model, and therefore all your beliefs and your certainty center around this sort of magical stuff in your head, the qualia and the feeling and the experience. That's the throughput, right? That's what's being explained here. Or as, as um, some people would put it, I guess Chalmers would put it, um, he calls it the meta problem. That is, um, the hard problem is the qualia problem. The meta problem is why do people even think they have a hard problem to begin with? That's what this theory uh, answers. Do, do you see that as an important turn in philosophy, like shifting from the hard problem to the to the meta problem? Um, I, I know parts of philosophy can can be a mess, but do you, do you see that as a as an important shift, or are they sort of parallel running questions? Yeah, I mean, ph sure, philosophy is super interesting. There's corners of it that are uh, a mess, of course, uh, um, but there's corners of it that have been re really interesting. Uh, I don't know how the field will move. Uh, but I know what my particular stance on it is. The hard problem is a mistake. Um, it's a very re it's easy to see how the mistake got made, but it's a mistake. There is no real hard problem. Uh, this this is the only ra the only possible rational logical answer. Like if you believe in logic, if you the 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 whole thing depends on these two basic principles. One everything you think you know about yourself derives from information in the brain. And the other is that the information in the brain is never really perfectly accurate. Like those are the two premises. From there, everything else flows. Uh, I think um, the hard problem is like when uh, 
at one point, of course, people thought that um, white was pure, you know, and colors were contaminated white light. Uh, and that's because the brain represented them that way at a very automatic level. And then those representations get uh, sent to higher cognition, and then it informs our beliefs and our claims. And so we're all absolutely certain of it. Um, but then Newton comes along and figures out actually white light is something totally different. It's a mixture of all these different wavelengths. And uh, what we thought was true isn't. And the reason why we think this is because the brain built a simplified model and we're a little bit captive to that model. And so that's exactly what uh, is happening here. The hard problem, qualia, uh, the feel, the experience, experience-ness itself, phenomenal consciousness, these are things that people assume to be true because their higher cognition is accessing a deeper model and the deeper model is giving them this picture. And what I'm saying is the deeper model is just information. That's all that's in there is just information. And the information is not accurate the brain's models are never fully accurate. They're always schematic. Uh, and it's describing something else, but it's, des it's describing it in a very useful way, but in a, in a way that's not perfectly uh, technically accurate. So we go around thinking we have these essentially magical or non-physical properties when we don't.